Hi, my name is Jason DeCoff, and I'm an associate professor at Tennessee State University. I want to welcome you to our Soil Smart series. We're going to be talking in episode four about liming the soil. So this is the soil liming reaction. We've got calcium carbonate, which is the most common uh, lime that we use. That's on the left-hand side, and then that reacts with water and it becomes soluble within the soil and it breaks up into its two species which are a calcium cation and a carbonate species that reacts with the acidity in the soil and that helps to neutralize it and increase the pH. Okay so this is an animation now that's going to show what's actually taking place in the soil. So we've got our two species that I talked about on the previous slide, our calcium and then our carbonate. And the first thing that's going to happen is the carbonate is going to react with the hydrogen that's already present in the soil moisture. And so it's going to react with it and it's going to neutralize it. And so it's not really gone, but that material is now neutralized. And so then we are left with our calcium and then also the acidity that's bound to the clay particles. And so the calcium is actually going to interact with those hydrogen ions and it's basically going to kick them out of the clay particle and then they're going to end up in that soluble portion, that um, soil moisture portion. And what will happen next is if we have any sort of a high rainfall event, uh, we're going to lose that hydrogen, that acidity, by leaching and so we'll end up with a relatively neutral soil or at least the pH will have increased um, a certain degree um, from what it once was. So now there are a number of different types of liming products that can be used. The most common one of course is calcium carbonate and that is the one that all the other materials are compared to. So you can see on the right hand side We've got calcium carbonate equivalent, and calcium carbonate is rated at 100%. And so everything else is compared to it. Some of the materials are, are higher, some of them are lower, but it basically tells the, you know, the, the effectiveness of that calcium carbonate, how good the, the activity is going to be. Um, the main thing to note, if, if you've got a material that's got a very low calcium carbonate equivalent, maybe something like those cement kiln dusts, those are around 40 to 50 percent, that indicates that you've got a lot of impurities. And so if you're applying enough lime to change the pH of your soil, you're also going to be applying quite a, a bit of these impurities as well. So it's important to understand what those impurities are so you know what else is, is being applied. In addition to that calcium carbonate equivalent, it's also important to understand the particle size of the material that you're applying. Uh, material that is has smaller particles is going to react a lot faster in the soil and so an example of that is that 100 mesh material that you see on the graph that's this represents a, a small particle size you can see it reacts and it helps to neutralize the soil within you know about the first six months after application and it also changes the pH from about 5 all the way up to maybe 6.8 um, close to 7. The other materials are, have a lot larger particle sizes and they take a lot longer and they don't produce the same effect as the smaller particle which again is represented by that 100 mesh material. So in Tennessee, we've got a law related to lime quality, and I'm sure other states have laws that are also similar to this one. In this case, the law is based on the calcium carbonate equivalent, as well as the particle size, and so you can see the thresholds that must be met for each of those. And then also the material that's being sold has to be properly labeled so that the consumer knows what they're applying, whether it's going to be applied to a garden or a field. So that basically wraps things up for this episode of Soil Smarts. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. My contact information is on the slide there. And we hope to see you for future episodes of our Soil Smart series.